All right, as promised, uh, here goes nothing. I did a few of these before. Um, I actually used to understand this game somewhat. I never actually busted out the whole map. Um, so let's do it like we used to do it. And we'll do, this game has no standard or advanced. It's just the game. Um, so let's get into it with some resources. Uh, you're going to want to know this website if you play this game. Wargalley.com slash EFS. Don't worry about the movement.php. That's just my printout. Check out this website. It's great. He sums up everything about the game. Uh, he even has flash examples of how to play on his website. He covers every phase of the game. Uh, and it's, it's colored on the website. It's got actual color. It's colored. So he goes over all the units. Uh, he gives examples of what, you know, each one can do. And like, you know, Soviet cavalry can, um, you know, if they've got a yellow movement factor, they can infiltrate how the super heavy artillery works, um, how the bridges work. So do yourself a favor and check out that link. I'll put it in the YouTube description, but that's a good way to get started. All right, so enough of that. Um, all right, let's take a look at what we got here. The game, disappointingly, comes with black and white reference cards. So when it talks about the movement values, um, it's not in color. Womp womp. Uh, but oddly enough, this side is. Like, I need to see the weather tokens in color or the railhead, or additional retreat orders. I don't need this shit in color. I need this to be in color. Okay, guys? All right, so, um, I can't remember if Crimea colorized that or not. I don't remember. I didn't like the Crimea version because uh, the battle for the Crimea was like just a huge trench warfare stalemate, get across the Isthmus little peninsula. It's got a, you know... A, a zoom in separate board uh, thing and it's just yeah, I didn't I didn't like it not my bag I like the wide open steps armor movement stuff like that okay so you're gonna want this uh, they do a good job of summing up um, a lot of things with this little card so you want to keep this uh, near you so the big thing about this game is it models movement and weather like, unlike any game I've ever played. It's crazy. Um, so once you get that down, let me move this out of the way, you can kind of get a flow for how this game's going to work. Um, when you start any scenario, you're going to want these two cards out. Um, each The Axis and the Allied uh, Soviet player. So you're going to want these two cards out because this is where you keep track of your air units as well. So I almost lost my camera there for a minute. Um, I almost did again too. Let me see if I can tilt this up a little bit. Okay. And we can go in here. So for example, you'll have air assets that will be ready. And you'll use them for airstrikes. There's, there is air combat in this game too, which is kind of neat. Um, I don't know if you can see that counter. So that would be like a bomber. So they'll fly a mission, then they'll go to the flown box. And then um, you'll have to ready your air units and you'll roll a, a die, and this will tell you if you can move it to the ready box or if it remains here. The weather will modify the roll. Um, if they're damaged, you can they go down here, and they could end up being uh, permanently destroyed. No die roll air units are moved from here, only through receipt of air replacement points or withdrawal. Um, so these, these boxes are kind of important because it also helps with replacements. Because uh, you can rebuild things, so you'll want to put them in here, etc., etc. And it has the loss replacement track 
And I think the only the Axis player keeps track of victory points. Um, so there is a method to the madness where these will go on here. I think something like that. You know, you put these on there. Um, all right, but that's enough of that there. Okay. So you want those two cards out. The game comes with these nifty little learning scenario postcard map things like that um, where you can play a whole game on this little dinky thing you don't need to get the whole map out so it's pretty cool um, if you have air transport missions available in the scenario you'll put this little counter on there and then once you use it you don't have any um, this scenario doesn't use them I'm just putting this out here for an example every German unit starts an emergency supply in this scenario so this is, um, I'm just gonna put this out to kind of remind myself. Um, and there's a summary of the rules right here. So you take out your unit counters and you'll set them up in the hexes as indicated. So here is the um, 4th Panzer Regiment or the 13th Panzer, uh, the 66th Panzer, um, or I'm sorry, this is a motor. What is that one? No, they do have a better, uh, they have a nice, like if you're confused about the symbols, they do have an, another play card here. You can look up what it is. Um, this of course is motorized infantry uh, up here. If it's got a little triangle in it, take note because you're gonna be putting that unit out on a reduced flipped over side. So I've placed all the units um, as instructed and the game is only three turns. The, the Soviet player is going first, so you flip it to indicate they're first. Uh, and the weather is frost. You put that little marker in there. No lingering snow and start with Soviet player segment. Begin air readiness and weather rolls. Uh, so it does a good job of summing up everything you need to do on this little sheet. And this is the pathetic situation the Germans find themselves in. Um, of course, the SS units are black. Here's the SS uh, Liebenstarter Adolf Hitler right here. Um, and they're reduced. So the LAH is here, but they're flipped over and they're in bad shape. Uh, not the best defense for the Germans. Engineer units provide bonuses when they attack with certain things. Uh, artillery has special rules in this game. So we can go over some of the units here. Um, so movement. The game uh, has this bizarro kind of cool um, set up the way it plays. Uh, it's a little bit different. So... It models weather very well. So let's take a look here. Um, trying to find the best chart that I can show. So here, for example, is the expanded sequence of play. So both players do this strategic segment. Okay. Uh, they do that. Then you go to the axis player, right? You'll see axis movement. Then you see attack declaration, the Soviets can react. There's a combat phase, okay? You just kind of follow along here. There's a motorized movement phase. What you're saying? That's odd. Two movement phases, then there's engineering phase. And then the Soviet player does their thing. So the Soviet motorized movement phase, all right. Conduct ground unit movement. Unit types allowed to move are refer to the chart. So here's the chart of life in this game. Uh, this is what you're going to want to learn. As soon as I find it, I will show you the chart of life. As soon as I get organized. Any day now. Any day I get organized, that'll be great. Okay. Give me a second. That is not it. Anytime I want to get organized. There we go. All right. This is going to be hard to capture, but let me just tilt this down a wee bit. Zoom in, maybe. Okay. So here you go. 
when it's the movement phase and it's the Soviet motorized phase, right? It's going to tell you that, so this is the motorized movement phase. You go down here. Can HQ units move? No. Can motorized units move? Yes, they get their full movement allowance. So you see how this is going. Can cavalry move right now? Yes, at half their movement allowance. Can non-motorized move? Nope. Can activated non-motorized uh, move? Full movement allowance. I don't know what that means exactly. I don't remember. Orange, green, gray movement allowance? No, with a star. Can armored trains move? Yes. So every so like the Germans though, they their motor during the, their motorized movement phase, they only get half their movement. The Soviets get full. So there's very subtle differences between each player's turn, and this is going to dictate what you can move. Now, so the Soviet player, um, you'll see here, find my thing. Uh, right here. Motorized movement is going to have this box around the number. What color is it, you ask? I don't know because it's printed in black and white. It's actually a red box. Um, a good example of that. Let me take one off the board here. Obviously, this is motorized because it's an armored unit. Uh, red box. See that? There's a red box around the movement. They're going to have that. Anything in the Soviet motorized phase that's got that red box around that last movement, it's uh, your standard... Um, attack, def uh, def attack defense move, stacking number, and designation. So you'll be familiar with the stacking numbers from Next War Poland. Okay, so any Soviet unit with the red box during the motorized phase can move. Cavalry, uh, the cavalry symbol is the, the slash through the uh, square in the middle, if you remember from other games. Um, Right there. So cavalry is allowed to move half here. Um, let's find some German motorized. I'm trying to find some armor. Yeah, like something like that. I haven't punched all these yet. So. There are some subtle differences. The motorized box, um, the, the last number will have a box around it. Now, if the actual movement number is yellow, okay, that means that, that unit can infiltrate um, and there's special rules for infiltration. And if the actual movement code is orange, it's non-motorized paying motorized movement costs. Um, for example, uh, orange. And here's motorized, because it's got the box around it. Um, Now, the, let's see, I'm trying to think what other weird, there's some other weird numbers you have to worry about. There's a no ZOC band on some units. Um, you'll see a, a yellow band across the top here. I'm trying to think of a good, like that. And that just means that they don't exert a zone of control around the unit. And the Soviet HQs are very important in this game. Um, they flip over when they're non-operational. So they're just showing that right here. And then you've got supply, supply dumps that you can move. You can take, I think, two of these and flip it over and make a supply dump, if I'm not mistaken. 
and you can trace supply to it. Uh, supply rules are very complex in this game. Well, not very complex, but they're, they're well done. So the game really simulates weather, road, road movement, you know, mud, and supply. That's the, that's the key things you must, when you attack, you use supply. You must plan ahead. You must plan your attacks like they had to. You must say, I don't have enough supply to do this attack. I can do this attack. So you've got to really think about it. Um, the stacking value is the amount of ground units uh, that can occupy a hex. Both sides, 10 stacking points is the maximum allowed in any hex. And if you're used to next war Poland, um, you remember that this number was a, was four. The stacking limit was pretty low. Here in this game, um, it's 10 at the end of a movement or a retreat phase. Range is the number of hexes an artillery unit can be from a defender and still provide support. Artillery is very big in this game. Um, for example, here's an artillery unit right there. Um, so artillery kind of works where it kind of hangs back and provides um, support. So this artillery unit, two hexes away, could provide support. And here's more SS units um, right here. And the supply things, here's some Italian, Hungarian, Romanian, okay? So the counters look like they have a lot of info on it and a lot of colors. Um, you just gotta really pay attention, like is there a box around the movement value? Um, if there is, then you know it's, you know it's motorized. Um, I take a look at these here. Let's see if I can find, like, for example, here's, now you'll notice this has a double box. That also means something. I forget. <laughs> Hold on. Um, the double box is, denotes two like, denotes two like-sized units combined on one counter. So I think you probably split that up. Now the game also has, the only thing I don't like is when you do step losses in this game, there's more than one. It's not just a matter of flipping it over like next war Poland. You, you, are, you will have to put on some of these counters. Okay. So the stacks can get a little bit weird. Um, you know, you, you cover them up and you got to go back and look. And All right. So if the Soviet player is going first, they're going to go to their motorized movement, and as you know, the ones right here, and they kind of summarize it for you right there. Reinforcement entry, one hex movement, armor train. Now, for this scenario, there's no railroad movement or conversion, no strong point construction, no replacements. It's basically move and try to take Rostov. Okay. All right, so that's a brief, a very brief overview. What I'm gonna do when I come back for the next video, I just wanna go over what the units look like um, in this one and just let people know I'm kinda studying this game. Um, and let's take a look at some of the other stuff in here. The maps are pretty big, so I, I don't know like if I'm gonna have enough room to, you know, get the whole, all these map, the whole map out. Um, it could be interesting. I'll have to see. Um, here's more counters. Axis air counters. Romanians. Uh, more Soviet air counters. So I've got to really think about how I want to do, um, you know, the later, if I do a later game. I don't know if I'm brave enough to attempt the whole game. So... All right, so that's, this is the extended sequence of play. This is in the back of the playbook. So they do a good job of kind of going over the whole thing. And then there's the Soviet attacks. The Axis can react. There's a Soviet combat. Then they move again, right? And it kind of breaks down what you can do. So when I do this, I'm just going to go straight to here. And I'm just going to start playing. And like, if I want to move something, I'll look up the rules for it. 
I think that's probably the best way to do it. I kind of remember how to play this, but it's been, like I said, about a year. Um, I kind of knew it a little bit, uh, but I did make a lot of mistakes the last time I played it. There's a lot of stuff to remember for each unit. Uh, there's some wonky stuff you got to remember and weird things that happen in the weather and all that. So the Soviet motorized phase, you're going to be looking for units with the red box. That's one. So during this phase, he can move his full movement allowance. So he's going to want to get up in here and attack. Uh, cavalry can move half. Plus he can infiltrate as shown by the yellow uh, movement factor. If I could just get that focused. So he's going to want to move too. Um, and if you ever lose your space, it's 4126 he was in. Uh, this this will tell you, you know, where the unit goes, which I forgot. 4327, he goes here, and he goes here. So this is the uh, Soviet armor, stacking of two. We just got to figure out where he can fit. And these poor German units that are reduced... Um, you know, we'll have to see how the combat odds work. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly how the table goes. I'm not going to say, oh, this looks easy, but who knows. Um, all right. So that's how the game kind of works. During each uh, turn, you know, only certain things are going to be able to move. So you'll see this is, this is the chart you want to constantly look at. So when it's a regular movement phase... For the Soviets, their HQs can move. Their motorized goes half. Their cavalry goes. Non-motorized is full. You can see who gets to move, so you kind of plan ahead like, oh, when it's when it's the German motorized phase or movement phase, everyone's got full movement. So you kind of plan ahead. And then here's your uh, motorized phase, say, right here. And you go across, and it's frost, and it kind of tells you uh, movement is allowed. Motorized movement during frost, yes, and it's got a little five on it, so you want to go down here and check what that means. So it, it does kind of help you out when you consult this, and then they've got their train effects chart, which I believe I might have buried. Let me put this here. Terrain effects chart here, pretty basic. Uh, you know, if you want to go, it's frost. This will tell you right here. We'll be looking at this column since it's a frost weather turn right there. And I'll be moving. And so the next time when I come back, I'll, maybe I'll show some motorized movement. Um, but I'm still reading the rule book over and skimming it. Uh, I do have some older videos up from where I played this, and also Counterattack on YouTube did this exact same scenario. Um, he's a good guy to watch if you want to see some excellent playthroughs, because um, he always plays the games that I'm thinking about playing, and then I'm like, well, crap, I should play that. Uh, all right, so that's just a brief, very brief info or intro about how this kind of works. Okay, uh, like the video, uh, give me a follow, subscribe on Twitch too. And let me know what you think, and then we're, we'll get into it on the next video, uh, hopefully this weekend. I am playing uh, No Retreat Italy uh, this weekend. We'll see how that goes. And I have fighting formations coming. So um, just an update there. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it.